that we can't anymore. <laughs> so he said, if you want to find a true Christian husband for your daughter, he had a single, single advice. Find a man who fasts. Because if he doesn't, he's not a Christian, whatever else he may tell you. That's a man who can control his body, and we'll talk about the soul, because the rule of the Spirit, the obedience to the church, which is the place of the Spirit. Right? In the kingdom, which is the church now, the Spirit rules. And the Spirit tells you when to eat and when not to eat. Is it easy to do? So to finish this uh, first lecture, I was realizing recently, I was thinking about the refugees. Uh, the refugees you know, from the Middle East and from Libya. So I'm from France. I watch the French news to kind of you know, keep my French alive, I guess, and uh, see what's happening over there. And there's no, there's no different politics, too. It's kind of nice. <laughs> and uh, but the news is, is all of these people coming from from Syria and from Libya. I thought to myself, you know, human beings, we have a great quality and a very horrible uh, danger, risk. We get used to just about everything. We accept things that we should not accept. I once saw a documentary about people living in China underground like ants. Like it's so expensive to live above, so they had like these underground uh, apartments. Like, why would people want to live like that? And think about what's happening in Libya, Africa. It's true, it's very poor. It's poor beyond uh, understanding. I went to a country that was the poorest in the world last year. It was, it was shocking that even filming didn't capture the poverty. It was just, it was <coughs> surreal. Surreal. You, you, uh, we landed uh, at the airport in Bangui, right? and there's a refugee camp, and the people live in, in abandoned aircrafts you know, from, from the French era, from the 50s, okay, and they live under the wings, and it's just a, it's a mud zone. And we landed, and it, the, the crew was new, and even the crew was like, what kind of place is this? And it's, oh, don't worry, we're just gonna drop people off and we, we, we fly right, right away out. But I spent a week there, and uh, I mean, poverty is, is real in some places. But I sometimes wonder, what about us? I mean, do we, do we accept our spiritual inadequacies? Or are we willing, like the refugees, to do something to, to go to a spiritual better land. When I first uh, came to America, I was uh, 25, and there was um, uh, a speech uh, where I lived uh, by a man in his 50s. And he said, I do not want, when I'm 60 or 65 or 70 or 75, to have the same weaknesses, the same sins, the same thoughts, uh, the same brokenness that, uh, that I have now. He said, I believe that Orthodox Church and the spiritual life is, that's what it's supposed to accomplish, joyfully, with light. And so, I think we should all really feel that we are refugees together in the ship called the church, the nave, and we are together, uh, you know, going to, to Eden. It's what St. Basil tells us, you know, the church gathers together, we face east, it's what Eden is, and together we are on this journey because we can't be happy uh, living for the body just you know, with our broken and disunited state uh, where the spirit wants one thing, you know, like St. Paul says, you know, I, oh, I desire spiritual things, but there's not an alignment of the spirit, soul, and body. We're not ruled by the spirit. And so I want to talk to you about um, what St. Paul tells us about the spiritual Christian, right? the pneumaticos Christian, right? and then the psychiki Christian, the, the soulish Christian. Right? That's the term in Greek. It's not uh, natural. It's psychiki. It's of the soul, ruled by the soul, and the carnal Christian. We don't want to be carnal Christians. Um, and, uh, and then the, the wisdom that we see. There's this wisdom that is psychiki, that has the soul, soulish wisdom, 
and their spiritual, heavenly, pure, beautiful wisdom that we desire to, to be fed with and to, to grow into. So that's it for my uh, first lecture. I think it is uh, just about time. If you have any questions, we have five minutes. Uh, if not, we'll uh, continue uh, as scheduled. Could you go back to your first graphic? I was just kind of intrigued by the, the picture, the outlines of people, and then... Oh, uh, well, it's not an orthodox graphic, but I do like something about it that is relevant, I think, to being in Alaska. I think it's true that through the body, we experience the world. Imagine you know, the, when you go to Alaska and you have the mountains and it's just a creation. We, there's an experience of the body here. That's wonderful. And then there's also kind of an emotional reaction. And we, we experience you know, the, a sense of beauty. It's, there's uh, this emotional uh, sense uh, that touches the heart even. It's, kind of, it's, it's organic. It's, it's, it's beauty, it's peace. But ideally then we are like to glorify God. Right? So the spirit always reminds us to fear God, to love God. And so, a truly, to, to cite Father Michael, a real human being right, uh, is able to, to engage the world and to bring all things back to the glory of God the Father, the name of Jesus Christ our Savior, in the illumination of the Holy Spirit. Right? That's our life. It's, it's Trinitarian. It's giving glory to God for all the things that we experience in the body. And we'll be judged for what we've done in the body, says St. Paul. So I think it's a useful graph for what it's worth. I'll say one last thing. Just as, you know, Makrakis got in trouble for pushing this in a mixture of nonsense, right? There's Pentecostal Christians who push this stuff in a mixture of nonsense. It does not make this useful, true, patristic, biblical information. The fact that people misuse things doesn't mean that it's not true or correct. It means that it can be twisted. Right? So this is very useful. You will see to read the scriptures and I think to keep our, our spirit illumined by the life of God, the Holy Spirit, and really in charge. And we'll talk about some of the liturgical things that we do that try to, to maintain this rule of the spirit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.